It's a taboo subject in our demographic. I mean, we don't talk about money at all. Like my mom and my dad, we've never had a conversation about money. It's like, it's a secret. What does mom make? What does dad make? Like even from a career advice perspective, like what careers make the most income? It's not talked about in African-American homes. The biggest challenge in our community is convincing, not convincing, but changing the narrative for our mindset that, yeah. hey, we can build a business, we can make money, we're not victims, we can we can uh, set aside life insurance for our families, yeah. set aside trust, yeah. build generational wealth. Our, our biggest challenge in our demographic of African-Americans is generational wealth mm -hmm. and not being taught the key to how that works. The best thing that a that a, a father can do for his son is to love his mom. I think it's important for us uh, to teach young boys what it means to be a man. For me, the, the biggest role we play is just being fathers. Um, the, the greatest thing about becoming an entrepreneur is being around big people like yourself who have big visions that stretch my vision. I realize, okay, cool, I'm capable of doing more for myself. Yeah. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. So my guest today comes from Compton, California, former Apple executive, and now here in the DMV area, specifically in Columbia, Maryland. Chris Hart, what's cracking like, buddy? What's going on, man? Enjoying some uh, Uncle Nearest uh, whiskey here, baby? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us about uh, what got you into financial services. It's crazy how it happened, man. I don't have a background in financial services at all, man. Um, grew up in Compton, California. Um, prior to, to being introduced to the industry, worked at a small company called Apple. They're quite large, right? <laughs> uh, Second company to a trillion dollars. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, I was a business manager there. I did B2B sales. I would help mm -hmm. companies integrate. Was Apple it the second company or first company to a trillion dollars? I think it was the first. First, right? First, and, and Amazon Bezos came and passed them up. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And so I was doing well there, man. Um, B2B sales, helping companies integrate Apple technology, software, hardware. I loved it. Uh, and I was at church one day working. Um, so were you in Southern California? At I was Apple? in SoCal. Yeah, at that time, okay. it's a city called Rancho Cucamonga, yeah. California. <laughs> That's your real place. It's not just on Friday. Next Friday, right? <laughs> People always say, "Is that a real place?" Is that your That's real right. city, man? Rancho Cucamonga. Got a lot of grapes out there, man. A lot of purple grapes, for sure. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. And so, man, a buddy of mine. Um, came to me about a company called PHP. I don't know what it stood for. He said, "People helping people," and yeah. and from there, maybe had a, a couple of meetings. I became a client. You met him in church, though. Met him at church, yeah. yeah. Met him at church, yeah. Uh, yeah. My wife and I were, we were volunteers there, our nursery. No kidding. Uh, watch, watch the kids from six to twenty-four. Watching months. your own kids and watching other people's yeah, kids. I was a baby whisperer, man. I was the one they were calling. <laughs> you're like, good, kids you're good crying, kids. man. I didn't know I, that. You, so the, the key is that the bass in our voice is, man. Take the infant. You just talk to them. They love yeah. the bass in our voice. Yeah. I was the only guy in the nursery. So. <laughs> I was working, man. I was working. <laughs> Let me ask you that question. You know, where do you think? Where do you think right now, men? The, the position of men are in our country? Because, you know, obviously we've seen what's happening with our kids, with our yeah. business. And do you have an opinion on that? What's your take yeah, on where men is today in society? Absolutely. I, I think, man, that the, the world is is demasculizing men, what we do. And I think men, we need more real men in our, in our world today. And one of the biggest challenges is this. I mean, I think for me as, as fathers, right, mm -hmm. we, have, we have sons. Uh, you, you have you have two sons. I have one mm -hmm. and a half, one on the way, right? <laughs> nice. one out and one in the, in the oven, right? And uh, and uh, I think it's important for us uh, to teach young boys what it means to be a man yeah. in a society where kids are kids are kids are being babied and, and boys are being babied and boys are being taught to do things that like we don't. It was different for us growing up as a man. And so I think for me, um, the the biggest role we play is just being fathers, yeah. just being in the household, being 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 present and showing a young man what it means because. Of, um, yeah, many single moms. I I grew up in a community where I've got five sisters, and um, and th four of them were single moms. Wow! And so I saw my nephews growing yeah. up with a mother raising them, and my sisters did a phenomenal job or the, the best they can. But a man, a woman can't teach a man how to be a, how to be a man. Correct. And we need more men in the home. And I think for us, we need examples of men like me and you, especially yourself, man, who are setting an example, providing business owners. Showing an example of what it means to be at home, to to be to to love their mother. Uh, it's funny. I came. I had a Bible study group going up for some guys in my uh, in my church, and he said, it "Was a quote from a book. The best thing that a that a a father can do for his son is to love his mom." It's like, wow. It was kind of controversial at first. Yeah. Like, like, really? Okay. Why, why is it? Because it just it just shows the example of being there and being in the home. Yeah. It's funny as you mentioned that because you know Jojo, who's now eleven, right? He's been watching me since he was a baby. I'm opened up. The door for Sheena, and you know, get her in the car. And when I'm not around, you know, what Sheena tells me, "Hey, when Jojo, you know, we're going to the car, he opens my door for me. Really, puts puts me in the car. He's like a little gentleman. Wow, you know, they see that. They see that. Watch that. Even yeah. my son, my wife is terrified of bugs. <laughs> I'll come home, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. My son's five years old. Daddy, I kept the spider for mommy. 
So protector. I'm like, Good protector. Job, man. I could have my hands, Dad. Smashed it. Hulk smash. <laughs> she didn't like spiders either. So, so let me ask you this question. What made sense for you to go from Apple executive? You know, you got a decent job. Yeah. I mean, yep. everybody from your community in Copco would yeah. love to have a job. Absolutely. At Absolutely. Apple. But what made sense for you to go from a good cushy corporate job to then doing something that doesn't have necessarily have guarantees? Initially, it didn't make sense, right? I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I was a client initially. I saw a value in our products and services, life insurance, retirement planning. It made sense from there. Uh, gave some referrals to the client, the agent who took care of me. Yeah. And then I was asking him, I said, what are you making on these referrals? He said, I make $7,000. So you make what? Seven grand helping out a client in two hours. I'm adding up. I said, this isn't making sense. <laughs> I don't make the kind of money at Apple. Mm, really? Yeah. And so okay. I was interested. I was like, okay, what's going on here? So we had a conversation. He showed me the comp. And, how the, and this is the second highest paid profession by professional athletes. And I thought, let me give it a shot. And, I, and Matt, for me, it was one of my first transactions where I was a couple I've known for years. Husband and wife, two kids. We sat down for about a total of 90 minutes. Yeah. Took care of some transactions with them. Took care of the kids. Protect, protection, liabilities, taking care of for the family. And I made about 2100 bucks. And I said, whoa, the next day I went to work at Apple, right? I'm making decent income. I felt ripped off. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not making this kind of money at Apple. And that, from that day forward, I was ruined. Because I realized you're, that you're I, mentally, you know, you, you can't unwind. It, yeah, like, you know, like I can go out there and monetize my gifts and talents and make $2,100 an hour or two hours of work. But I can keep doing this here and maybe up it to $4,000 to, to, yeah. to $8,000 to, to $16,000 from there. And I knew. From that moment forward, okay, cool, I got to find a way to, to get more involved in financial services, be, go from part-time to full-time and transition. So what, what is that? Because a lot of people don't think that you can have a career in financial services on a part-time basis. We do at PHP and we allow people to onboard part-time. Oh, so so what was that process for you to go from part-time then eventually full-time? Because when's the last time you took a check from somebody to, to pay your bills? Like when's the last time somebody paid you? Hey, Chris, thank you for your time for this job, this work. Two, six years? Six years since you last took a check from somebody else. Six years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a transition because, I mean, we, we, when I was getting started in PHP, you're transitioning from an employee mindset. So I, got, I still have a W-2 mindset. I'm clocking mm-hmm. in at Apple. I'm getting paid. I'm clocking out. As I'm working in PHP, I'm realizing quickly that, okay, my income is a direct reflection on the work I put into this business. So for a lot of us at first, is a transition period where you're struggling yeah. in the world. Okay, cool. I get paid based off what I put in. Yeah. At Apple, I just show up and get a check. <laughs> Let's keep it real. At a job, you can show up. Give sixty yeah. percent effort. Yeah, they don't know. You can be. I've seen guys hungover. Sure. So at the job, of the course, job, of paid. course. If you're building a business for yourself. You're hungover. Me, I'm not making any money that no. week. What are you doing? Yeah. Get focused, right? And so I think the transition is a period of developing, growing, mentorship, um, reading the right books. Um, Robert read many books from Robert Kiyosaki, an indirect mentor of mine. And what's great about our system at PHP is that you have people like yourself. You have an example of what it means to be self-employed, to be a business owner. To no one tells you to show up to the gym and work out. No one shows mm-hmm. you, Matt. I've watched you before. I watched you catch a flight back home, <laughs> head straight to the office, make phone calls. No one's telling you to do it because because your vision is demanding it from you. And so I think that the greatest thing about becoming an entrepreneur is being around big people like yourself who have big visions that stretch my vision. I realize, yeah. okay, cool. I'm capable of doing more for myself. Yep. One of your one of your most profound messages I've seen you do on stage is you're really like in, in a position of being a financial advocate for the African American community. Absolutely. You know, so so we've just discovered this year due to our our, our survey of our come from our chief reputation officer from Moral that a little over 33, 34% of our company yeah. is black American. Yeah. And it's it can, win, man. <laughs> it's got, to, it's got to do a lot with you. It's yeah. got to do a lot with you and, yeah. and, and what you've been doing with the company. So talk to us about what that's like going into your communities, talking to African American couple, Latino couple about finance and insurance. It's a taboo subject in our in our in our, in our, in our, in our demographic. I mean, we don't talk about money at all. Like my mom and my dad, we've never had a conversation about money. It's like it's a secret. What does mom make? What does dad make? Like even from a career advice perspective, like what careers make the most income? It's not talked about in African American homes. Like to go out there and go make more money. It's like, hey, maybe get a social service job. You know help people, yeah. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. Who are the people you looked up to when you were in grade school, high school, junior high, high school? Who were like the guys in the neighborhood that you like, oh, dude. The guys who had money? Drug dealers. <laughs> so it was either- it was, yeah, it was, don't say. It was either the pastors or drug dealers. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, what do you, what do you, what you want to say? two different types of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> one got Jesus, the other one got, got cracked. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And so, and so I, wasn't, I wasn't around business owners. I wasn't around entrepreneurs. I, I was told that, hey, people who were rich were bad. 
were evil. My mom and dad were involved with the church. We would, we would go down to South Central on Saturdays with a bullhorn and preach the gospel. We, were, we didn't have a lot of money. And we were, my mom had a, rent, a nonprofit. We did okay. We weren't poor, mm-hmm. but like we didn't, we weren't abundant. And so for me, it was like, okay, if you're giving, if you're running a nonprofit, if you're serving, you, you, should, you can't have money. Yep. So I, I, as a kid, I'm like, can I have money and influence and still serve? And so, it, and so it's the biggest challenge in our community is convincing, not convincing, but changing the narrative for our mindset that, yeah. hey, we can build a business, we can make money, we're not victims, we can we can uh, set aside life insurance for our families, yeah. set aside trust, yeah. build generational wealth. Our, our biggest challenge in our demographic of African Americans is generational wealth mm-hmm. and not being taught the key to how that works. And the thing yeah. I love about PHP is that working as an insurance agent with a swipe of a pen, I can set up a legacy for a family. Yeah. When you're looking at families and when you're looking at capitalism and free enterprise and what you've been taught now on this platform, how has your framing of rich people, how is your framing of maybe how you see the world and how yeah. potentially how you vote in terms of economic policy, yeah. um, what's what's helping you manifest the type of income? Because let me ask you this question, what's been your last 12 month rolling cash flow? 545K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little... So five, half a million dollars. Yeah, yep. Okay, you're in the top one percent of America. Yeah, it's crazy. It top one from Compton, California. College drop off from Compton, California. <laughs> I failed college graduate three times. I said, "Mom, I can get past. <laughs> it's not for me." Any sales background? Uh, not really. You worked in retail. So I know you have an executive background, but yeah. any business running your own business background? Oh no, 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 no. So no business. Any financial services background? No, not at all. Not at all. So you went from scratch. Yeah. Working for yourself the last six years yeah. to now making over five hundred forty thousand dollars in income. One hundred percent. In the middle of this pandemic, of this COVID, has it affected your business? The business grew in the pandemic, and we actually went from two eighty in income last year to over four hundred k in income last year. This year, we're tracking six fifty. And we're doing this interview from your new office that they're building right yeah. now as we speak, yeah. and you're renting how much square foot office out here? Um, six thousand square feet. <laughs> Just signed a lease for this office um, two weeks ago. So many. Commercial real estate owners are freaking out oh. because people are thinking of working from home. Yeah, they're retracting, they're ex- they're downsizing. We've got so many spaces here of companies leaving the building. Where we're coming in, signing leases, people are leaving, going back home, and and downsizing. And we're we're, we're growing, and it's and it's economic uh, downturn as as a country. So it's crazy what, what's happening, man. And I think the biggest thing is, is realizing that we work in a, in a business where. In down times, man, we, that's just called it, economic downturns, inflation is down, people, it's a, it's a level of uncertainty in our country. Yep. And we, we give security in that. Yep. And I, I think the, the biggest thing, going back to your, your, your question around- Around capitalism, free enterprise. Capitalism, free enterprise. My mindset has changed a ton. Prior to PhD, ton. man, I grew up in a company, California, a very liberal community. We all voted a certain way based off the color of our skin. And being around people like my mentors, Patrick McDevitt and yourself, just challenging my thinking around books I'm reading. And I just voted a certain way. I, I remember going home to my mom and saying, hey, mom, I'm curious. Like, why did why do we vote this way? Mm. He, you, you can assume the way we voted. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. 100%. Do you go down the ticket, d- Democrat. Right, blue, 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 blue. blue, blue. We just don't ask any questions what we do. I said, mom, sometimes these, some of these politicians don't, don't, don't agree with our morals, values, and principles. So why are we doing this? And as I started to make money, started to open, to read, to grow, mm-hmm. to become a self-thinker, yeah. I say, you know, I don't think I align 100% with one side or the other. I, if anything, I'm a little more center-right, just based yeah, off yeah. my morals, values, mm-hmm. principles, my views on money and people. Mm-hmm. And so now, now we're, I'm in an environment where I'm realizing that, okay, no one, 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 one party is telling me, Chris, you're a victim. Yeah. You're a yeah. black man in America. You can't make it. I'm saying, but I'm making it. I'm working hard. Yeah, I'm around the right mentors. And I'm realizing that I can do anything I want to put my mind to. Yeah. And so the narr- I'm being taught a mere narrative, and the biggest thing for me, I don't like bullies. And I feel like, there, and, and I've noticed that as a people, African Americans, I, in my opinion, is that we're being bullied and being told that we need someone's help, we need a handout. Man, I don't need a handout at all. Yeah. And because, and, and I think the best thing about the environment, I think, I think your your environment, your reality, and your, your social perspective. I hang around a lot of, a lot of immigrants. From El Salvador, West Africa. I noticed Obama. today we had Colombia, Honduras, Guatemala. Paraguay was in the building. Yeah, Ghana, yeah. Ghana Nigeria, Sierra Leone. Yeah, yeah. We had all sorts of people, and we got people here from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you have all sorts, all and, and everybody's getting along. Yeah, all one hundred percent. No, yeah, yeah, no division. Yeah, yeah. because you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. we weren't worried about one color. Yeah, color, exactly. color, money, color, green. So, what would you say to people out there? On the outside looking in, you know, they're looking at PHP, 
They're looking at the insurance industry. Mm-hmm. They're looking working for themselves, entrepreneurship. Summarize it. What would you What would you tell somebody out there who's watching this video right now? So, hey, maybe you need to take a look at something, especially if you've been hurt by yeah. the pandemic. You're being bullied to take a vaccine or no vaccine, whatever, how people feel about that. Yep. Yep. We tell people, hey, listen, whatever you feel is safe, what makes you feel safe, yeah. the bottom line. So what would you tell somebody about there about just considering a different career, like what you just said, part-time and potentially going for yeah. that? I'll tell you this here. Uh, the decisions you make today dictate where you'll be in five years. I think we made too many decisions from the now, today, the now, today. We have no vision. We lack the vision we need. And so if you're saying, man, the next five years, I want to be in a position where I'm financially free or on my way to being financially free. I can make choices for my family. No one tells my family what to do or where to go. My kids are in private school right now. We had a disagreement with, with the teachers for taking them out, going to a new private school. Wow. Teacher didn't agree with leadership. Told my daughter, you don't lead your, 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 your classmates. I lead them. I said, what? <laughs> oh, I said, we're out, we're out of here. Like, what's that? My daughter's a leader in any domain she's at. She's going to yeah. lead. She's yeah, hard. she was speaking on stage in front, in front of, of 10,000 people. <laughs> yeah, great. And so great time. That. This, this environment gave me an opportunity to give my seven-year-old daughter a platform to speak in front of 10,000 people at the age of seven. And so if you're looking for an environment of people who are real, who are genuine, who are going to teach you, pour into you, mentor you. Matt, you flew out here to, to, to the Maryland market today. You don't have to be here. You're a seven-figure cash flow earner, man, multi-million dollar income earner. You're here saying, I want to give back to the community. You got people upstairs who are making minimum wage, being forced to take vaccines. You're teaching them today for hours a formula on how to become what, do what you're doing for your family. And so, so too many times you see people from afar on, on TV and on stage, mm-hmm. and whether they're music artists or sports, they aren't teaching us. So you're teaching us, again, a platform for myself. So I know for a fact that I'm in an environment where you and your wife, she and Sopala, are going to teach me the blueprint on how to be successful how to be a cash flow millionaire, first generation cash flow millionaire, and get to a point to where I can teach others to do it. So if, you, if you're saying, man, I'm looking for that, man, worst case scenario, you're working with us, you'll learn about money and finances for yourself, give a, give a, get, have an opportunity to teach your community about money and finances, and, and, and you grow. That's worst case scenario. But most likely scenario, you come on board, you make six figures a year for a couple of years in business, you stick around long enough, you crack seven figures. I'm curious before we wrap up, what was your first, give me that progression. Give, give somebody some hope. Okay. Let's watch this video right okay, now. Yeah, yeah, give yeah. a progression, let's say the last five years. Last five years. That's right. Let's go back 2015. So 2015, you heard what I said earlier. So guys, <laughs> I made, I made $9,000 in 2015. The whole entire year, part time. The entire year. I was, I sucked. I sucked, man. I was <laughs> well, figuring look, this thing it's out. It's about seven fifty a month. <laughs> Actually, I mean, think about it. A person making another seven or fifty bucks extra. I man, guess that's not bad. Hey, yeah, you're you're yeah. paying off a card note. A card you're paying so off yeah, some I bad. guess it's not too bad. Sure. So we went from 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 a little over nine grand to seventy four thousand dollars to ninety eight thousand dollars. But that's a jump, though. The big jump. Nine grand to seventy four thousand. Big jump. You can never out earn your identity. As Tell- my identity increased. Okay. As I read more books. As okay. I went to conferences, invested into myself, went to trainings, qualified for everything. My identity increased. The income follow. Yeah, so your 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 income is all your your identity is always six months at twelve months ahead of your your income. So as I'm growing, developing, um, mm-hmm. teaching new concepts, learning new things here, qualifying for things, hanging out with Robert Kiyosaki and you a couple months sure. back, right? John Maxwell, John C. Maxwell. Yeah. My identity is increasing. My income's following. Yeah. The challenge is this: most of us don't increase our identity by the books we read, yeah. the means we attend, people we associate with. And so, if you seek out identity and wisdom and knowledge, mm-hmm. your income is sure to follow. If you are in the DMV area or you got business all over, you know, across the country, make sure you connect here. We got all the links here. Make sure you follow Chris Hart. If, listen, if you can do it and we can figure it out, and if you're jarhead like me, you can figure this business out, imagine what type of opportunity you have to as well. So with that being said, guys, if you haven't done so, make sure you like our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. And if you watch this on YouTube, make sure you click like, subscribe, and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. But I have Chris Hart now here in Columbia, Maryland. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.